Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. This is question number eight from the October November 2021 IGCSE Cambridge Paper 4, Variant 2 from the 0580 syllabus. This question is about somebody called Kato who runs along a 12 kilometer path at an average speed of x kilometers per hour. <coughs> Write down an expression in terms of x for the number of hours he takes. So we need to know here that speed is equal to distance over time. Speed is equal to distance over time. That's how we linked what they gave us. What they gave us is something about the speed and, and the distance and number of hours. This is time. So we've got to have something that li links those quantities together. So speed equals distance over time. If you rearrange it, you get time is distance over speed. Time is distance over speed. So the number of hours he takes, we can say t, 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 is equal to the distance he traveled, which is 12 kilometers, over, over the speed, which is x kilometers per hour. So they are compatible <coughs> units. That's kilometers, that's kilometers per hour. And the answer is going to come out in hours when you divide those. And that's what we want. So the answer is 12 over x is the time it takes him. Uh, to run along this path. Then it says Yuki takes 1.5 hours longer to walk along the same path as Kato. She walks an, at an average speed of x minus 4 kilometers per hour. Write down an equation in terms of x and show that it simplifies to this. So let's look at, this is Kato. This is for Kato. So Kato, he takes his time, you can say tk, <coughs> is 12 over x. And Yuki, her time, say Ty, using the same idea, all right? Um, her average speed is this, and it takes her 1.5 hours longer. Okay, so we've got her time equals her distance. Okay, so the distance is the same. Okay, the same path. Okay, and her um, speed is x minus 4. <laughs> four. But her time is 1.5 hours more than Tico's time. Okay, so what we can say is, um, what's the name, Yuki, her time of, the, is, this, is the Yuki's time is the same as uh, Tico's time plus 1.5. Okay, so Yuki's time is Tico's time plus 1.5. So what we can say is 12 over x minus four is <laughs> equal to 12 over x, plus 1.5. Or we could say 12 over x minus 4 minus 12 over x equals 1.5. We could do that if you want. Maybe that's an easy way to start it. So if I write it like like this, we can say that if I subtract Yuki's time and Tika's time, Teiko's time, it's going to give us 1.5, which is 3 over 2. Keep it as fractions, I guess that's better. So that will give us uh, 12 over x minus 4 minus 12 over x equals 3 over 2. Now, we want to now show that this becomes this equation here. So what we can do is we could do two things. One thing we could do is we could make the denominators the same on this side and then cross multiply. So let's do that first. I'll show you both ways so that you can see different ways of doing it. So I can make the denominators the same on this side. So I can make this one common denominator which is x times x minus 4. So to make this x times x minus 4, I have to multiply that by x. So I'm going to get 12x on top. And to make this become x times x minus 4, I have to multiply it by x minus 4. So I multiply also the top by x minus 4. And that's equal to 3 over 2. Now I can multiply both sides by x times x minus 4 and also both sides by 2. So I'm going to have 2 times, let me just... Um, in fact, I can just I can write it like this. This is going to be 24x minus 24 times x minus 4 equals 3 times x times x minus 4. And if I expand this, I'm going to get 24x minus 24x plus that's 24 times 4, which is 80 plus 16 plus 96. And this is going to give us 3x squared minus 12x. So the 24x cancels with the 24x minus 24x. 
So I'm going to be left with, if I just subtract 96 from both sides, I'll be left with 3x squared minus 12x plus 96 equals 0. And all of these are divisible by 3. So if I divide by 3, I'm going to get x squared minus 4x. And 96 divided by 3 is 32 equals 0, which is exactly what we have to show. So that's one way of doing it. That's one method. The second method is you have these fractions in an equation. Let's get rid of them by multiplying everything by the LCM of the denominators, which is 2 times x times x minus 4. So both sides, I'm going to multiply every term by this. So if I multiply this term by 2x times x minus 4, the x minus 4s cancel, leaving me with um, 2x times 12. And if I multiply this term by 2x times x minus 4, the x is cancelled, I'm left with 24 times x minus 4. And if I multiply this side by 2x times x minus 4, the 2's cancel, leaving me with 3 times x times x minus 4, which gives us exactly the same line that we got here. So 24x minus 24x plus 96 equals 3x squared minus 12x. And these cancel out, so I'm left with 3x squared minus 12x minus 96 equals 0. And all of these are divisible by 3, so I get x squared minus 4x minus 32 equals 0. So either way is perfectly fine um, to go on to show that it simplifies to this value. Then it says solve by factorization. Part 3, solve this by factorization. So to solve this, we need to factorize, we need to find two numbers that multiply to give you negative 32 and add to give you negative 4. So we have x times x is x squared. There's no need to split the middle term here because it's a 1x squared. It's pretty simple to just put it straight into two brackets. One of the brackets have to have a positive sign, the other has to have a negative sign because when you multiply them together, you get a negative product. Um, so they must have different signs for sure. Then when we add them together, we get negative 4. So we've got to think of all the ways of getting 32 and a difference of 4 between the two numbers, basically. And I can see straight away 4 times 8 gives us 32. But one of them has to be negative, one of them has to be positive, and the difference has to be negative 4. So it must be negative 8 and plus 4. Because that's what gives you, if you add them together, you get negative 4. You multiply them, you get negative 32. So you have x equals negative 4 and x equals 8. Those are the two solutions to this equation. Now, this equation, x stands for the hours that he takes. And negative 4 actually doesn't really make sense. You can't have a negative number of hours. However, the question part 3 is not asking us to put it in context. Part 3 is just saying solve this equation by factorization. So you have to put both answers down. Okay, so you don't write it in terms of, ah, oh, x can't be negative 4, so I'm not going to write it down. No, that's what happens when you now answer part 4, where you have to put it in the context of the question. Find the number of hours it takes Yuki to walk along the path. Now, for Yuki, her time was, if you remember from up here, it was 12 over x minus 4. 12 over x minus 4. So now, I'm not going to put negative 4 in here, because that one won't make sense. It will give us a negative time. So that's when I say x cannot be negative 4. x has to be 8. So you have 12 over 8 minus 4, which is 12 over 4, which is 3. So 3 hours is how long it takes Yuki to walk along the 12-kilometer path. All right. So it's very important that we understand that in part 3, we have to write both answers down because they're just asking us to solve this equation. They're not asking us to put it in the context of this question. But number 4, that's where we have to say, ah, x can't be negative 4 because x is a time. It's negative time, doesn't make sense. We must use x equals 8. All right, so that's a very, very important point there. And I think, is there more to this question? Yep, part B. Okay, so a bus travels 440 kilometers correct to the nearest 10 kilometers. So this is a separate question, which is not related to the first question. And it's about actually limits of accuracy. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to stop this here. And I'm going to put that other question, part B, in another video, which is going to be about limits of accuracy, upper and lower bounds, um, so that I can categorize my answers according to topics. This would be under um, algebra and constructing equations. Okay, so um, if you would like to see other questions from this paper, including part B, you'll find those in the playlist that should appear in this area
at the end of the video and also at the end of the video you'll see a playlist here for this topic which will be um, I'll put it under the um, playlist for constructing equations and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon